Okay, it's Mike Bundrant from the INLP Center going to walk you through a quick slideshow called Listening and Problem Solving. In this tutorial, we'll learn the problem great problem solvers have, as well as a simple protocol to overcome the problem. Einstein said, if I had an hour to solve a problem, I'd spend 55 minutes thinking about the problem and five minutes thinking about solutions. And we've come up with an interpersonal translation of Einstein's quote that says, if someone came to me with a problem, I'd spend 90% of the time understanding the problem and 10% of the time intervening. Here's a bit of reality. Whether you're a coach, manager, or person with friends and family, you're surrounded by people and problems. Because in case you haven't noticed, life is difficult. And the only people without problems are dead. So problem solving is a basic human skill, one of the most important. And many of us pride ourselves in doing it quickly. This strength can become a frustrating weakness in the interpersonal realm where mutual understanding is necessary before proceeding. And I'll add a little bit to this. If I can solve my own problems that don't have to do with anyone else, if I can solve them quickly, that is great. Actually, whatever pace that I can solve my problems at, as long, uh, as, long as I'm solving my problems, that's great. If I'm involved with other people in problem solving, then my own pace is not the only pace that matters. I've got to go based on mutual understanding, and that's a very, very different context. So problem solving is different depending on the context. So the problem solver's interpersonal problem, a common thing that great and quick problem solvers go through, is acting too quickly to solve problems before understanding deeply or allowing the other to feel understood. There's an acronym, a couple of acronyms that apply here in NLP. We could say P before L, pace before lead. For those of you in the NLP training, with regard to pacing and leading in communication, you've got to pace someone before you lead them. And there's an old human relations acronym, R before T, Relationship before task. If you're going to ask someone to do something, make sure that your relationship is solid. That comes first. And so, for those of us who regularly uh, have this problem, the problem solver's problem, attempting to help others solve problems before they are ready to solve them officially. The diagnosis is fixeritis. It is a clinical matter. If you have fixeritis, you've got issues. <laughs> All right, fixeritis can lead to breaks in rapport, solving the wrong problem, shallow solutions, giving a fish instead of teaching to fish, and really mass frustration for everyone. If you come to me with a problem, I quickly get a solution. And before you agree, or before you have the experience that I understand your problem, that I understand you, I'm already offering solutions. You may feel dismissed by me. Uh, you certainly wouldn't feel understood. It would break rapport. I could end up, based on a shallow understanding, solving the wrong problem, uh, offering a shallow solution, giving you something to do, giving you some advice without understanding maybe the underlying cause. And where if we, under, if we understand and work to resolve the underlying cause, that actually could lead to ongoing solutions for you for a long time. And so we don't want to give a fish instead of teaching to fish Ultimately, I'm frustrated because you're not listening to my solution. You're frustrated because you don't feel understood. Fixeritis. 
So here's the protocol for overcoming fixeritis. When someone presents a problem to you, an issue, a situation, first access the right mindset or an NLP we would say state. You need a resource state. Use an information gathering model. Super important here and I'll explain why. And then facilitate solutions only after the other agrees that you understand. And we'll talk about that as well. So the first step, which mindset do you need when someone's presenting a problem to you? Bearing in mind M. Scott Peck's quote, you cannot truly listen to anyone and do anything else at the same time. That kind of puts it in context. So what do you need? Focus, patience, curiosity, confidence. Which state do you need? What's your resource? for listening skills to put you in that place where you're gathering information, paying attention, watching, listening, without feeling compelled to jump on a problem-solving protocol. First, you're focusing on understanding. Identify that state and intentionally access it when you're in the mode of gathering information in order to help someone. And then use an information gathering model. Those of you at the INLP Center who have uh, who attended this webinar are going to recognize this model. It's basically a model that suggests when someone begins to talk with you, they're going to either start talking about a problem or their goal or desired solution. It doesn't matter which one they start talking about. You learn about it. You gather information about it. And then, uh, knowing that you need to know both sides, what is the problem, a thorough understanding. Also, what is the other person's desired solution? What do they want to have happen? You need to know that too. And only after you know that, both sides, then you do an intervention. And you can see the... Uh, coaching steps one through four in this graphic illustrate that. The reason why that uh, I'm presenting this here as a solution to fixeritis is if you use a model like this and you go, okay, here in my mind, here are the steps. First, I need to thoroughly understand the present problem. And then I need to understand the desired solution. And then I intervene then that slows you down if you gather information according to this model. It puts a structure in place that you can follow. If you have fixeritis and someone presents a problem, then it's very likely that solutions will begin to occur to you naturally. It's just an awesome skill to be able to uh, have those thoughts come, solutions come sort of pouring into your mind and so on and so forth. However, if you're using a model and someone's presenting a problem and you just start laying out the solutions to them before they feel understood by you, then you've got the symptoms of fixeritis, at least at risk for those symptoms, right? So if you're using this model, they start presenting the problem, you start thinking of solutions, and then you go, okay, well, before I start laying out solutions, I need to understand the other person's desired solution. So I've got to ask those questions. Given that you have this problem, instead of this problem, what is it that you would like to have? What's the goal here? Now I'm still working on understanding you. And if I follow the model, it slows me down. And that's what we want to have happen. We really should spend most of our time gathering the right information about the problem and the desired solution so that when we do intervene, we intervene in a way that is really effective given everything that the other person is going through everything that the other person 
wants to have happen. And this applies in coaching. Obviously, it also applies in other contexts as well. When friends and families, co-workers, employees are presenting problems to you, then if you have a model in mind, it doesn't have to be this one, but if you have a model in mind that regulates your responses according to an effective protocol, then you're more likely to be disciplined in your communication. And that's the importance of an information gathering model. And a couple of answers to the question of when do you stop uh, gathering information and intervene. Answer one, when you understand both the problem and the desired solution and the other agrees you do. So again, we're in the interpersonal communication realm where you can't go faster than the other person uh, can. can uh, they won't keep up with you. A rapport will be broken and all those other symptoms we talked about of fixeritis are going to appear. And so what we've got to do is keep on pace with the other person and get their acknowledgement that we understand. And that's we can talk about uh, what that uh, involves. It could involve just simply saying, okay, so let me see if I've got this right. Let me see if I understand the problem. Here's my understanding. And then ask, do I get it? What am I missing? And when the other person says, yeah, you got it. That's it exactly. Then you can move on to either gathering more information or intervening. But you've got to have the other person's agreement. The best way to get the other person's agreement is simply to check your understanding. And when you check your understanding and they agree, you've got a green light to move to the next step in the process. If they don't feel you've understood, then they're going to clarify, which is great. And the answer number two to this question is never stop gathering information. Always keep your eyes and ears open. So when you are implementing a solution, you are still seeking to learn more about the problem, to learn more about the desired solution. You're seeking to understand whether what you're doing is working or not. So you never turn your eyes and ears off uh, as you go through the process of intervening or implementing solution. You're, uh, you're always gathering information. And that's step three. And I just said what this, uh, what this slide says. Never stop gathering information about the problem, desired solution, when you intervene, whether using a technique or any other method facilitating change, keep an open mind and open eyes and ears for new information. Thank you so much for listening to and watching this slideshow presentation. I'm Mike Bundrant from the INLP Center.